Hey guys, my wife said to me, you need to build this end of bed storage chest. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make your wife happy in the bedroom as well. So to get started with this project, I've gathered all my materials and now we're gonna break all of these pieces down to their respectable sizes. I have my cut list here that you can download for free on my website, diybuilds.ca, as well as all of my other projects. Let's go ahead and start cutting things up. So we've run into our first issue. This top piece I have cut here is actually a quarter inch too short and that is not my fault. That is because I'm trying to reuse as much scrap wood I have around the shop. As this top piece is going to be wrapped in fabric, it doesn't really matter what it looks like. So to fix this issue of it being too short, I've got a little piece of wood right here. We're gonna glue it on the end, tack it in place with some brad nails, be good as gold. Now this project is being painted as well. so. Using as much scrap wood as you can is always a great idea for projects like this. So with all our material cut to size and my one by material in front of me at my homemade pocket hole machine here, you're interested in this thing there are several videos on how i built it we're going to go ahead and put two pocket screws on the end of each one of these boards our next step is going to be over here at the router table where i have a rabbiting bit set up and we're going to be making room for our panels to go in between the one by material So we're ready to begin assembly. You see our joinery is gonna be inch and a quarter pocket screws as well as some glue. Now, the thing I like to do is preload all the screws in the holes. It just makes things go faster when it comes time to assembly and be sure to use clamps. Otherwise your screws will move around on you as well as using a drill, not an impact driver and set the clutch to around 10 or so for this drill. That makes a nice snug fit without blowing out the hole. Now to assemble this front panel that has the three inserted panels, the only difference is going to be I'm going to build the outside first and then I'm going to measure my 12 inches between this edge and this edge, same at the other side, and then we'll insert our panels. Now we can move on to getting the hinges mounted. You see I have one in the center, two on the outsides, and we're gonna be mounting them with these one inch construction screws. I will use my self-centering bit, and then I'll come back and drill these all the way through with a pilot drill, as you don't wanna split this end grain MDF. Now you can go ahead and mortise or rabbit these hinges a little bit into place so they're nice and flush, but I think we actually don't wanna do that in this scenario because the thickness of the cloth wrapping around we really want that extra bit of distance right here. Otherwise it's gonna kinda of be spring loaded and the lid won't quite close properly.
So I can't really think of a great way to attach the lid to the rear hinges here. So I've put this little spacer here so the hinges aren't collapsed in on themselves. They lay nice and flat. And then I've coated them all in double-sided tape. So uh, yeah, we'll stick it to it, take it off and attach the hinges. Hopefully that works. With the lid now attached, we can get on to mounting these guys. And what this is, is it stops the lid from opening past a certain point, as well as it has a built-in soft close feature so my kids don't crush their fingers. So this wants you to take this piece right here and get it mounted using their little template here. All of this is in Chinese. Yes, I bought the cheapest thing I could find. So it wants you to just take the piece of paper here and then mount it like that. Unfortunately, that's gonna kind of interfere with the some of our cutouts from pocket screws and all that. So I'm just gonna get it in the ballpark area and then just adjust it so we have nice solid wood to screw into. Also avoiding going through the panels in the middle here. With this side mounted, I'll just lift this up. It is hard to move because of the soft close and we'll extend the lid to 90 degrees or right about where I want it and just drill the holes and attach it. I'm going to add another one to the other side and the lid is done. Now that really is a soft close. Anyways, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the lid. I'm going to leave the hinges on the lid, take them off the box. I'm going to take off the soft close to get out of the way. And we're going to add some foam on top and then our cloth. I'm going to attach all that with some half inch crown staples. You really want to use the crown staples as I've found with just a regular staple gun. It really doesn't have that oomph and that holding power. You see, I've got two little braces right here for underneath the seat. I don't know if they're strictly necessary, but they'll make me feel better. So I'm just gonna add some glue and some brad nails and that'll hopefully stiffen up the seat so my butt doesn't break it. So just before we can get to our last step, which is spraying the paint on this sucker, we need to sand it all. Now, I really wish I had done that before assembly, so take that as a note, do that before you put it together. As it turns out, I had to come back and add the mortise for the hinges to sink them down a little bit as the thickness of the cloth was not quite what I thought it was going to be. No big deal. Just do this before we paint. So it's been several days and the reason I've waited so long to reattach the lid and all the hardware, which we're going to do now, is because we don't want the paint being any way wet or tacky so it attaches itself to the underside of the lid or any of this fabric, you want it fully cured. So let's go ahead and attach everything and this project's done.